Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzu7 here again, and welcome to another RuneScape 3 video here today. In this video, I'm actually going to be going over a bunch of updates and things that I haven't discussed. Uh, it's been a really long time, a really long time, since I last did a update review video. Like, one of my, no like, I used to do every week on Monday, I would make a video talking about the patch notes, reviewing the update and all that sort of thing and let me i mean i'm scrolling back through my videos and I, <laughs> maybe back when necromancy first released which was literally just over a year ago as of like last week it was a year since necromancy came out and i had like first day thoughts on that but even before that i wasn't making weekly videos on the update or well maybe i was dead and buried quest woodcutters grove so, okay, so maybe, but I mean, well, then, then you have a gap from June to March. So, you know, I don't know. It's been a really long time, but I want to bring it back. I want to come back to doing the weekly review videos, and I'm going to be making them from here on until I get bored of the game again, and who knows when that'll be. But right now, I'm enjoying the game. I've been playing quite a bit since Sanctum release, and I'm here on the hardcore right now, and I'm just going to be mining at the new mining spot here at Damonheim. Um going to try and keep spoilers to a minimum in terms of things that I've worked on in the series or anything like that but yeah I uh I'm just mining here I, I don't have the new pick yet as you can see but I am using a primal uh plus five so kind of no reason for me to be mining here until I get the new pick but it's only perks that are different so it's not the hugest deal um anyway I'll, I'll talk about this update eventually but before I get into everything I want to go ahead and give a little announcement slash idea, put it out there into the universe. I did mention at the end of my hardcore video that I just uploaded, but that is almost an hour long and I doubt many people will watch the whole thing if the if watching it at all. Uh, basically something I think I want to maybe do with the, ooh, I'm going to have to pause the recording to go do that KBD event because uh, I don't want to show stuff in my bank and stuff, but Anyway, I'll get through my spiel, then go do the event, then come back, and we'll start talking about the updates. So, what I want to maybe do, because we do have Group Iron Man coming soon, and I am going to be playing a Group Iron Man with me and two of my friends, so it'll be a three-man team. And what I kind of want to do is, with that account, kind of maybe try and make a guide for everything, almost. It's something I've wanted to do on and off here and there. I mean, I've never been super into making a ton of guides, but I made them here and there. And I've always enjoyed doing, I just absolutely punched my desk. So sorry if you heard that. But um, yeah, like at least a guide to every quest. I have my whole catalog of archeology span mystery guides, which I really liked making. And I think it could be fun to do with the new account. At this point, I think I've completed every quest in the game at least three times, some of them even four times. Well, some even more than four times, especially if you count old school. But um, yeah, I think I have a pretty good grasp of every quest at this point to be able to give a decent guide on how to do it and some little things and tips in there that maybe the wiki doesn't show you, I don't know. And then there's also a bunch of other things that I'd wanna make, and it'll, it will be obviously on an Iron Man. So I'll include tips for Iron Man, especially for things like things you need for the quest, where to get them more easily, different things like that. Um, and then there's also other things like on an Iron Man, different things to have guides for. I don't really know. I don't have a ton of things planned out for this, but that's just something I've been thinking about. And I'd like to hear what you guys think about that in the comments. It would obviously give me a lot more content to make alongside my current hardcore series. I would obviously also be making a progress series on the group Iron Man, but then also having those guides there. And I'm bringing back the weekly video reviews. Let me know your thoughts and any feedback you might have on that idea in the comments. But yeah, we're going to be talking about almost all the updates that I have missed talking about. Um, I don't think I'm going to go back to last year necessarily. Um, but I'll look through the archive and see what I've what I've all missed. I feel like I talked about them more recently than I did, but... Wait, time just time does fly here, I guess. Um, I do have this look ahead rambling in February. Maybe I'll quickly review that while I go do this event. But I'm going to go do the KBD event, and I'll be right back for the rest of the video. 
All right, I am back, and it has been much, 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 much longer than I anticipated. I went and did the KBD event, and then I went and played GeoGuessr for a long time, and then went to go make dinner, and then went to the skate park, and now I'm back. So, thankfully I split this video up into two things, and now we're going to be jumping in to the updates that I've missed. And I'm just going to start, I'm in the archives here in the in the RuneScape news archives. I'm going to start back in February, I think is a good <clears throat> place to start. And I'm not going to go into huge detail on a ton of the stuff. Uh, like but the more recent stuff, I'll probably talk about more. So first of all, in February, one thing that they did change, which I've been interacting with a decent amount, as you can probably assume from my want to go do the KBD event, they changed Wildy Worm into a flash event which I think is kind of, I mean, I like it personally. I had, but the thing is, I'd never done Wildy Worm before. I'm actually just going to go to his wiki page really quick. I don't really know how it worked before. Like, it was like just wandering around the wild or something, and you could fight it if you wanted sometimes or something. I don't, I, I don't really know. Um, but I do know it looked like a strike worm in the ground, but was way bigger than the normal lava strike worm little mounds. Um, okay, well, they, okay, they have a historical page. Yeah, so it was, it was this way for nine years, and it had a rare chance to spawn next to the other lava strike worms. It can be summoned and controlled by Jmods. What the heck? Um, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I don't, I don't really know if people did it too much or not or whatever, but I think now people are actually interacting with it, and it's cool. That, I mean, it's it is just another flash event, so it's nothing that interesting necessarily. But um, you also get an additional bag that can maybe have a um, a worm heart scalp or spike in it, but that's very very rare. Uh, however, it does count for the collection log, so that would be kind of nice to get. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's just a, that was a pretty small update, but. Um, it's also another way to get a very wild sack, which is nice because that's, you know, that's kind of what I want to be getting. Um, and then they talk about the combat beta. The combat beta, I did not play at all, but the combat changes were part of the reason why I started getting back into the game slowly. And then the roadmap, <laughs> bro, what is this mining animation? What, is, this guy's just beating the crap out of the rock with his fists. <laughs> <laughs> this game is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, then the roadmap really brought me back into things, and, and now with Group Iron Man coming, the Sanctum I thought was really good. We'll get into that. But anyway, uh, then they had the Housing of Parliament quest, and it's it just a super boring and kind of nothing burger quest. But with that quest came the Moonstone Jewelry, I believe, which is actually pretty decent. Um, the Passing Bracelet's nice for teleporting. Obviously, the Alteration Glyph Necklace is really good for rituals. And then the ring is obviously good for runecrafting. So actually some useful and relevant jewelry with the quest, which I've been making use of. So the quest itself, though, pretty boring and uninteresting. And then that was probably it for February. One thing that actually was changed in January of this year that I never knew, and maybe you do, but I figured it out because I was somehow sometimes not using up Voln bombs when I was throwing them. If you complete the breeding log for a animal on player owned farm or the ranch out of time, you permanently get the tier one perk of that animal because you know each animal has a perk if you put it in the pen with that uh, as an elder with a farming totem. You get a permanent tier one version of the perk. If you finish the breeding log, which I, it's really, really nice. That was like a patch note in January that I didn't know about and just found out the other day. Um, so, yeah, just figured I'd mention that in case maybe anybody else didn't know about that. Um, in March, they came out with the combat changes, which, um, again, I'll, I'll give credit where it's due. Shout out to the RS guy for summarizing those and <laughs> making it so I didn't have to figure it out myself because uh, I probably wouldn't have bothered. And... Um, yeah, that, that really got me back into, you know, being interested in playing again with Necro not being just completely OP and other styles being almost pointless. Uh, then they had Easter event, which I didn't play, uh, so probably not that interesting. Um, so yeah, March was ma mainly just that. Let's see, April, what did we have in April? Fanatical Bundle. 
May and June content updated plans. I know sometime through here was Osseus, right? Yeah, Osseus was in May, I guess. And then we had the Damonheim dig site, which I made videos on a little bit. Um, so when, oh, the, the Requiem for a Dragon quest came out in April. I did that quest fairly recently. Um, I thought it was, a, it was a pretty good quest. It was a decent one to wrap up things or kind of, you know, wrap up the Ferenthry part of that storyline. And it also came with a, f a fairly strong ring for necromancy, which introduced a new cool passive. So overall, that quest was pretty good and a uh, decent reward. And then there's also the new ritual site on Ungale, which looks cool and is cool thematically, but um, I don't really see any reason to ever use. You have slightly increased durability on your glyphs and candles, but you also get reduced XP. I believe so. I mean, I just don't see why you would bother because you, you don't. And it's also supposed to have extended time on the uh, ritual disturbances, but I didn't find that to be very different. And also, you know, you kind of would just do them immediately if you have, you know, Alt 1 running and telling you when they're coming. So overall, um, I'm never really going to use that ritual site. The only time I used it was to upgrade the ring. And after that, I don't really see the point of it. Um, I think if the, uh, what's it called? The durability or the, yeah, the durability increase was was bigger than it is. Maybe it would be more worth using, but it's really not that big of a difference in terms of the durability, but overall good quest. And then in May, what do we have here in May? They had the 295 Magic Dual Wield Beta, which I did not play in, but we also had the Osseus launch, which I actually haven't killed Osseus at all on any of my accounts just yet. So um, that is, you know, not something I can comment on too much. I think the the ring that that introduced was also cool. Uh, the occultist ring, I think it's called. And then they had the interesting system of jail keys for pets, which are like pretty rare. Um but overall, I mean, I think it made sense to add in a Rex Matriarch for Necromancy, and overall it's, you know, fairly cool. Um, but nothing really that exciting as a mid-level-ish boss, right? Uh, but definitely something I'll be killing in the future, and uh, I think it was a successful release and overall good. The main thing, obviously, that happened in May was the big roadmap release, which really got me back interested in playing. Um, and yeah, I think they did a really, really good job with that and presenting it. We're actually getting another roadmap either tomorrow. I think tomorrow there's like a reveal of it, and then they have a full deep dive on on Friday, something like that. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I'll definitely be covering that in a video as well. Um, but not only did they have the roadmap, they then additionally had the survey, which I also did a video on, and they had this new thing that they've been keeping up with fairly frequently called right-click examine, which is obviously a cool thematic thing because that's a part of the game, and it's about an update. So the first one they did here was about the Sanctum of Rebirth, which gave a lot of information. And um, then they also had one even, you know, just a couple or even just like a week after that for future skilling content where they're talking about different skills going to 110. Obviously, we just got the 110 mining and smithing. Next is going to be woodcutting and fletching. And um, yeah, they, they basically talked about why they're going to 110 and not all the way to 120 for these things and, and stuff like that. And obviously, eventually, we will see things to 120 for, and they say maybe in five to six years, we'll have 120 all. Two to three years, maybe we'll have 110 all. So overall, pretty good uh, information there. And I think it's pretty cool. And looking forward to the additional increases to skill caps. This mining one, I've barely even gotten into, but I, I think it's, it's a nice uh, direction for them to continue going. And then we have June, which, uh, was that when the Sanctum came out? Surely not. No, that, June was the archaeology dig site of Damonheim. So yeah, the Damonheim dig site came out in June, which I did, of course, cover the mysteries on. Overall, I mean, the dig site wasn't the worst thing in the world. I'm a pretty big fan of the uh, Skeka's Hypno Wand that was released with it. Um, but the mysteries were pretty disappointing for me, which, which is one of the major things I like about archaeology. But... Other than that, it was just as good as every other archaeology content, which is, in my opinion, fantastic and, and really fun to play. So overall, not too bad. 
Um, they, of course, added the two new skilling offense, the Sekus Hypno Wand and the Balarax Sash Brush. Although the Hypno Wand isn't really gotten through archaeology whatsoever. As far as I can tell, you get it from Anachronia. Like, uh, I think there's one that... There's a couple different activities where it's more common. There's like there's one that's more common from the agility course. And there's BGH, Osseus, and one other thing that I can't remember. Um, maybe the Slayer mobs. Not sure. But um, overall, cool that they added new skilling offhands. And then the um, <clears throat> well, the relic was pretty useless as well. So from the expectations I had of what a new archaeology dig site would contain i mean they called this a full dig site right not a mini dig site like sentiston this definitely felt more like a sentiston mini dig site to me because we only got one relic there was nothing really impactful like people were hoping to see like the consolidation of skilling versus combat relics where maybe you could have a like two different sets active or switchable without paying um and you know no way of making the luck relic always active somehow without sacrificing others things that people are hoping to get for qol mostly in the relic department were kind of left unaddressed with this update but overall it wasn't the worst thing in the world um, we also got the inf unfortunate news that runefest had to be rescheduled because of something completely out of jagex's control and not their fault so that, that was just kind of a shame although uh i wouldn't be going to runefest not really worth a trip out to England for me. Um, and then the beach happened, and then they had right click examine f or re examine, because this is another one for the Sanctum of Rebirth where they gave more information. Let me see what this one actually had in it. Um, okay, they said which of the off or which of the effects were going to be chosen for the tier 95s. And that's about it. So, yeah. Then we had July, of course, last month, which was when the Sanctum actually came out on July 22nd. Although additionally on in this month, they released the hard and elite tasks for the Underworld, which um, the rewards for that are actually really good. The Underworld Grimoire 4 has some really strong effects like 10% chance per impure essence of receiving an extra rune while you're rune crafting. That's really good. 12% extra XP from dispelling ritual disturbances, 15% extra necroplasm from rituals. You also get two daily powerful ghostly inks from loop. Uh, and that is in addition to a bunch of other inks, you can free stuff you get from loop every single day. Um, so overall, it's definitely worth doing. And the tasks they added, I think made sense for the most part. Um, it was, a, it was a good, uh, you know, good addition and, uh, you know, Glad they finished that out finally, about a year after the task set initially released with just the level one and level two versions. Um, so that was a good update about halfway through the month. And then we had the Sanctum of Rebirth come out on July 22nd. And uh, this was uh, one of the, my favorite boss releases in recent years. Um, absolutely fantastic new system of telegraphing that they added to the game essentially with this update where the, there's these very clear and square blue fields on the ground that show you where an attack is going to hit and where you don't want to stand if you want to avoid it. And um, it, it spawned a lot of interesting discussion that I saw around ping, which I thought was a little bit odd, um, because people were saying things like, this is the only boss that's ping locked. You can't do it with, with bad ping. And I, I mean, I guess they were talking about it that way because obviously with, well, I mean, even with Nakatra, you can see a lot around the arena what the next um, squares are going to be, but it's it's pretty hard to do. Or I mean, I've never even tried. Um, but hey, maybe if your ping is bad, you might want to do that. But it is, in my, from my perspective, who doesn't look at those, random where the squares are on that one, you know, her main attack. Um, so that people were complaining that you can't do it with bad ping, but overall, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic boss dungeon. Um, the first boss is a little bit, eh, uh, honestly, but I do think it's kind of cool how the crystals are blocking so you can place them in certain spots to block the side heads from hitting you. I think that's a pretty cool, uh, potential mechanic. And then the second boss is pretty decent overall. Um, I, 
on, in, on the inverse in that one, the the <laughs> crystal block, the blocking crystals are a bit annoying. And the only thing that is slightly annoying at that boss is sometimes you don't notice the scarabs that have spawned. Um, but you know, you just got to pay a bit closer attention. And then Nakatra is just a, a fantastic boss in my opinion. It's very fast paced, um, but I really enjoyed it. I, I didn't really have much trouble getting into it. Uh, obviously the first time in I got insta-killed not knowing what the heck to do when I got pulled into the Shadowland. But once you get that figured out and once you have a good grasp on the timings for things, it definitely flows really nicely and it's really fun to do uh, in my opinion. I mean, I, I just I just think it's a fantastic boss. I really can't think of much that I would fault about the, the Nakatra boss fight. That, I mean, I'm trying to think of something and uh, it's not really coming to me. Um, it is pretty bad when you dive but don't get the reset. You kind of get screwed pretty bad if that happens. So I do wish maybe, I don't know, like if you if you think you'll make it, but don't, it's pretty bad because like you'd be you you would have been better off not even trying and then dodging the rest with dive. Um, but that's kind of one small thing, and I mean, you should be avoiding them uh, if you are doing well. Um, and then the drops uh, from the boss I think are cool as well. Um, I don't really know too much about the tier ninety fives. I don't really know what the spec does um, or or what they do exactly. I don't have them on any of my accounts or anything. But the uh, the shard of Genesis essence, Genesis essence. Yeah, I did say it right, but it sounds weird. Uh, is really cool. I think it's a cool idea having all of our existing. I think they're calling them legendary weapons are able to be tiered up to tier one hundred now. With this shard and um yeah i think that's a that's a pretty sweet little system that they have and it's also cool that it's kind of like a permanent unlock on your account so if you sell those weapons and get them back at a later date how did this person just teleport here who knows but um if you sell those and get them back at a later date they'll still have that upgrade um also the, the boss drops or the bosses there drop moonstones fairly frequently which is nice as they were a pain to get before and what else um the scripture um is i don't really know much about the scripture i don't know if it's very good but it seems like you don't get a lot of pages for it importantly as an iron man so it might be a bit hard to use um and then there's the there's a new prayer on the normal prayer book funnily enough which uh, i think it was called divine rage or something i was really surprised to see that i don't actually know if it's good at all for anything but, you know, obviously it's pretty, it's a pretty hard sell to give up Soul Split uh, for pretty much anything. It would have to be a pretty insane damage differential to make that ever worth it. But either way, um, I do think that it's cool that they're trying things like that. And I'm sure with enough numbers tweaks, that would be a potential thing that you'd want to do. And they may, well, I don't know. I can't really think of anywhere that you don't use Soul Split. Uh, you know, I was thinking like, hey, maybe with God Wars one, but then like, oh, you you want to use Soul Split there? Um, but I don't know. Hey, it, it opens up some potential opportunities for additional builds, like with the uh, I think it's called the Zealots Necklace and things like that. Um, I think that's everything with that update. Let me just see if there's anything else. Um, yeah, overall, I think really good. Oh yeah, they also made that Sonic Wave, Concentrated Blast, and Magma Tempest don't need to be specific uh, to dual wield or two-handed, which is definitely interesting. And it kind of falls more in line now with Concentrated Blast being crit-based and the FSOA spec also being crit-based. So I think that is, um, that's pretty cool as well that they did that. Although it does take a little bit away from the identity, uh, you know, the different identities of those two things. Like they, I think they had originally maybe talked about just swapping them, you know, the um, the dual wield and uh, two handed nature of Sonic Wave and Concentrated Blast, but they ended up just making them all um, agnostic of the type. But still, um, yeah, just an absolutely fantastic boss release. The telegraphing mechanics are amazing. And I mean, I would love them to be brought to old bosses as well, but that's probably un, uh, not a feasible thing for them to do. 
but I am kind of assuming that that's also going to be present at the new skilling boss, which is upcoming. And I think it's fantastic. I mean, it just makes things so much better. And it doesn't necessarily just default make it easier either. Like, it just makes it more intuitive and easier to learn. Like, if they if they weren't there, you could, well, I mean, Nakatra's attacks with the squares on the floor would be pretty hard to make any sense without the telegraphs. But either way, I mean, I think they're just fantastically done. And then the insta-kill mechanic is cool. It's not super... Sorry, there's like a ton of sirens going on outside. I was trying to hear what that was. But there's not like, you know, it's not like super difficult to clear the insta-kill mechanic, but then there's also that memory aspect of it where you have to remember the symbols from the Shadowlands. I think that's a really cool mechanic too, uh, especially if you take a long time on the last phase and there ends up being four symbols in the Shadowlands and five outside. You have to be like, which one was not in there? Ah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a fantastic boss. I've done like 15 or so hard mode runs on my main account, and I'm looking forward to getting into that boss on here as well. It is, uh, it's just super fun and, and really brought me back into wanting to play a lot more uh, of the game. So yeah, really, really good launch of that. And then there was nothing else for this mode. They did have a right click examine about skilling bosses, which was interesting to read. And um, they did say that the new skilling boss is going to be able to be soloed, which I think is fantastic. I every day wish that Croesus was viable in solo because I would do it a ton. Um, right now, getting a group of four people is kind of annoying. And I don't know. Everyone always says about, and I always talk about this as well, like everyone says, it's an MMO. You should have to do things with other people. And it's like, eh, I don't know. It's just not how I like to do things on this game. Um, then the in this month, we, we made it to this month. Oh, I guess the skilling boss examine was this month as well, but whatever. This month, they also did a right-click examine for group Iron Man, which was pretty interesting to read about. They talked about how augmented items were going to be able to be traded or put in the group storage or something. Um, they were at least going to be transferable between accounts, which obviously was very key. One thing that I thought was pretty sad that came out of this, and also... I think, honestly, kind of a bit of, at least a little bit of a fumble on their part. One thing they talked about and honestly preached in this blog, they just kept harping on about it over and over, is this this word parody. One, and this is word for word from the article. One of the core aims for the design of Group Iron Man was that it must, at a minimum, match the same feature set as old school. Parody was the key word during the design phrase. Ensuring parity between both the RuneScape and old school versions of the update is important so that all of the features you expect to be there are there. And if you're coming from old school to try RuneScape Group Iron Man, you know what you're getting into. However, not available on release is Hardcore. Old school Group Iron Man obviously has Hardcore groups available, and that's not going to be available on release of this version so i don't know why they focus so much on talking about this parody it has to be the same when it's not going to be the same that's a pretty big piece that's missing and now i know there's a lot of people out there who are like who cares about hardcore people who play hardcore are stupid whatever i don't care what you think i and my friend group want to play hardcore and that's not going to be available for us so and they said i, I posted on reddit saying I'm hoping this parody thing means hardcore is going to be there, even though it's not mentioned in the article. And they said, no, it's going to be coming later. So we're going to be, I mean, we're going to be waiting for that. So we're not even going to be able to play it on release because we want to wait for the hardcore version. And I know a lot of content creators have been saying the similar thing. A lot of the people who made content about old school group Iron Man and people who moved from RS3 to old school to do it went there to try the hardcore groups. And that's, you know, I've heard a lot of content creators have been saying they're not going to bother making videos or doing Group Iron Man until Hardcore comes out, which is where I'm at as well. So just a bit weird that they went about that in this article and talked about it in this way. But basically, groups are going to be from sizes 2 to 5. It's Everything else is pretty much the same as old school. They also talk about this new journey achievements system, which I thought sounded really cool. Um, they said it's going to be light qualifications from archaeology, which I really liked. It's going to provide a wide variety of challenges and tasks, requiring the whole group to come together to complete it. Um, and let me see. 
how yeah here we go so um what did they say about it? sorry i'm just reading just to refresh my memory i did read through this whole thing so they they give an example of journey tier one and there's a list of tasks here that are required achieve a certain total level across the whole group achieve a certain number of quest points across the whole group have all group members complete cook's assistant so on and so forth and then at least one group member has completed the scourge of mistal achievement which requires you to kill three cows three goblins three giant rats three wizards and three barbarians it's just a really cool sounds like a really cool system and then once you complete a full tier of the journey system you will get some sort of rewards i think i'm not sure if they go into detail about what that is um unlocking the first of ten, there's going to be 10 tiers and they will help reward you with access to more group storage and maybe some other things like that. So that's really cool. I think that system sounds awesome. And I'm hoping that maybe is available for other accounts as well for, uh, for some, some things. I think that would be really nice. There's also going to be the, the uh, competitive group Ironman, which requires you to never be benefiting from any other player outside your group at any time which I think is very, very cool. I'm looking forward to that. It's honestly going to be more difficult technically than normal Iron Man, where you can get assistance from even main accounts nowadays with the PVM changes. And um, that's going to be nice. There's also a founder. I think they call it founder, which is basically the prestige system of old school, where you only do things with, with your group and nobody ever is added or removed after the group is formed, I think. So... Overall, it sounds great. I'm just going to be holding out hope for that hardcore uh, uh, version. And then lastly, we have 110 Mining and Smithing that came out this week. And um, of course, we knew quite a bit about it coming into it. We have all of the um, Damonheim ores have come up to the service. I think there's 10 of them, correct? And um, they're all just scattered around the Damonheim Peninsula here. You can make primal pickaxes, a primal ore box, and there's primal stone spirits, which work for all of the ores. You can upgrade your tier 90 pickaxe to a tier 100, which is called the pickaxe of life and death, which in my opinion is a downgrade in the naming department. Pickaxe of earth and song for me sounds cooler, but hey, what are you going to do? They weren't going to keep it the same name, I, I, I assume. And that has a pretty interesting process to create, including needing to do shooting stars and a bunch of stone spirit usages and stuff. But overall, I mean, I think it's it's a very nice amount of content. People are memeing on primal armor and how it's not ever worth using, but I don't really see many people out there rocking elder rune armor or anything like that either. I mean, it's just a, a route for training smithing. Also, people are clowning a bit on the masterwork two-handed sword because... It doesn't have a passive, and I do think it's a bit weird that they didn't give some sort of passive or some sort of additional effect to the Masterwork 2 ended Sword, because obviously the trimmed Masterwork set has a, um, a pretty powerful passive effect for tanking with melee, so um, it does seem a little bit weird that the Masterwork 2 ended Sword doesn't have it, but overall I think it was a, it was a good update. I am, I'm a fan of, I mean, I think mining's a, good, a, a fun skill to do, and I do enjoy... Um, uh, training it up smithing i'm not as big of a fan of but i think it's cool that you make five bars at a time and then uh you know just smithing up some burial armor to get that up is, is not the worst thing in the world um and then yeah i don't think there was i mean there's not a whole lot to talk about about the update even though it is a pretty cool one you know it's just another 11 levels of mining and smithing with uh, all these new ores and then uh, just pretty much a new tier of armor available outside of the primal uh the primal or the masterwork two-hander which is at the top end but um yeah i think i think it was it was overall a successful and a good update i do hope that they um maybe add a trimmed masterwork 2h sword at some point maybe that is a bit uh better and has some sort of additional effect but we'll have to see on that one thing that's a bit sad is that they did add primal stone spirits to a bunch of loot tables and they replaced in the metamorphic geodes they replaced the anima crystal which you could get that let you get rep at god wars 2. Um, i kind of liked that being in there uh, maybe selfishly and was hoping it would be in there for group iron man but 
that has been removed and replaced with primal stone spirits they're also on the super rare drop table they're on the raptor's chest of slaying you can get them from triskelion keys raksha has had carambola seeds replaced with the primal stone spirits raziel has had them just added to his loot table solak has had his baynite stone spirits replaced aod has had cadentine seeds replaced care pack has had it added to his loot table uh, at raids it has replaced u logs as loot it also has dropped by edamus calgerian demons seekers and soul gazers so quite a few sources i would be very very expectant that the new skilling boss will drop them as well but um yeah then uh that's that's pretty much it i think that i wanted to cover today so i hope you guys enjoyed this it was a bit fast for some of the updates but i do think i want to just get this out and done and uh have it be out there so now i can start doing the weekly videos once again on mondays i hope you guys are looking forward to the return of those i will definitely be making a video tomorrow covering any new information to get from the updated roadmap i'm really looking forward to that and uh yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments down below i'll see you guys in the next video peace out